this year's MLK committee thought it might be fitting to ask a local leader in the African community to reflect on King's legacy as an African who immigrated to the United States in 1998. That man is today's keynote speaker, Papa Dia, who hails from Senegal. Papa M. Dia is founder and executive director of the African Leadership Group, also known as ALG, an established 15 year old Colorado nonprofit created in 2006 to help improve the quality of life for African immigrants and members of the diaspora. Through social, economic, and educational empowerment programs, ALG helps families successfully integrate into the local community. A native of Senegal, Papa immigrated to Denver in 1998, as I mentioned earlier. He used his first job stocking books to teach himself how to read, write, and speak English. Beginning with an entry-level position in a local bank, over the next 18 years, Papa ultimately climbed the ranks to become a regional vice president. In 2017, Papa left his banking career to focus his full attention on running and growing AOG. So a quick personal aside, I was the one person that he met at the Tattered Cover bookstore in 1998 when he came off that airplane. And we both worked on the second floor of Joyce's store in the political science department. And look how far he's come. Really quite remarkable what a dream can do. So I just thought it would be really fitting to have someone of Papa and what he has done to share some thoughts of what it looked like being an African in the United States and the legacy of Dr. King. So it is my great privilege and honor to introduce Papa. Good afternoon, everybody. I'll ask you to bear with me. It's going to be a very emotional ride, uh, having somebody that guide me through the process and this journey introduce me. It's truly an honor and a pleasure to be with you this afternoon and to be picked as the keynote speaker for the annual Dr. Martin Luther King launching and award ceremony. I'm here to share my story and share how Dr. King impacted my life and inspired me to launch the African Leadership Group. And I'm gonna use some of his quotes throughout this presentation. And what I'll start with, I have a dream. One day on the Red Hills of Georgia, the son of former slave and the son of former slave owner will be able to sit down together at the table of brotherhood. I have a dream that one day, right here in Alabama, little black boys and little black girls will be able to join hands with little white boys and little white girls as sisters and brothers. I have a dream that, four, that my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will be judged by, they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. Growing up in Senegal, I never imagined the profound impact of the legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King will have on my life. Yet as a black immigrant to the United States, my opportunities and successes are the direct result of the civil rights movement led by Dr. King. As Derek mentioned, I came here in 1998, but I would like to paint a picture because Derek said, 1957 was a very interesting year. If I had been born 40 years earlier and came to the United States in 1958 instead, I would have, I would have found it almost impossible to build a successful life in this country. While racism and discrimination in the northern western United States were less blatant than in the south, they were still very real 
and a young African man will find it extremely difficult to find meaningless, meaningful work to do. But that's not how life played out for me. My mother had 13 kids. My dad, we have more than one wife, had 25. Growing up in a poor city of Senegal, eating every day was a luxury and a challenge. Every day, I had to figure out where my next meal would be coming from. I remember vividly as a child, we moved 17 times because dad was not able to pay the rent and we kept getting evicted. I grew up in an environment where nobody valued education, but at an early age, I always wanted to be an educated person. To go to school each day I had to wait for my brother to come home, take off his clothes and shoes so I could wear them to school. I had no access to book. There was no library. There was no one to guide me through my homework. To study at night, I had to walk for miles to a place where there was electricity because we had none at home and in my neighborhood. Because my family did not value education, I would come home on occasion and find my uncle using one of my school books, burning to make food, to make tea or cook food. He didn't do it to be mean, he just didn't understand. Nevertheless, I persevered to make it through high school and into college. And this is what Dr. King taught us. If you can't fly, then run. If you can't run, then walk. If you can't walk, then crawl. But whatever you do, you have to keep moving forward. I came to the United States in 1998 without knowing what I'll be doing next. Again, Dr. King taught us, faith is taking the first step even you don't see the whole staircase. When I made it to the United States, I thought my challenges and struggle were over. But in many ways, it was just the beginning. I had to start all over, learning a new language, a new culture, how an African immigrant will fit into a society filled with discrimination against black people. Starting a job at Tarot Cover, as Derek mentioned, where my duty was to stock books, do a limited level of English. I used that opportunity to learn how to read, write, and speak English. And Derek, I know you mentioned it, but this is the time I really officially thank you for your mentorship. This man had to be patient with me when nobody could understand the word that was coming out of my mouth. And 23 years later, to be invited as the keynote speaker to this event, I'm speechless. But thank you so much for your patience and mentorship throughout the years. And later, I transitioned to have an entry-level job at the bank. I managed to co overcome all those challenges and struggle and continue to do so. But let me assure you of one thing. I did not do any of it by myself. I got help and mentoring from many people. And a lot of them are here this afternoon. Because they're here also, they want to continue to support and help me. I would like to express my gratitude and my thanks to all of you. While I, while I was at the bank, my fellow African will come and to see me to help them cash their check, open their bank account, and get their first car loan. And later they will go into the community to share with other members of the community to let them know we have a brother working at the bank that's helping us. And next thing you know, people here will call it the community, but I call it the village. The entire village will show up to the bank. I start helping with translation, filing immigration papers, and so on. I started to spend more time doing community work than my bank duties. And obviously, the bank managers start expressing concern. 
But I knew right there and then how important it was as an immigrant to have somebody that you could relate to that could understand and identify need to help you. I could not just send them anywhere. And again, as Dr. King taught us, life most persistent, life most persistent and urgent question is, what are you doing for others? So I had a dream. I had the dream to start the African Leadership Group with the mission to help the African diaspora integrate and prosper by connecting cultures, developing strong community leaders, and advocating for economic, social, and educational impact. The first 13 years I ran the organization while I was still working at the bank full time. My wife has to be very patient with me. I was doing two jobs, and I had no funding or grant to run the organization. But the last six years, I've been blessed with the support of Fee Foundation and the Walton Family Foundation was the one leading the way for me to be able to leave the bank and do the African Leadership Group full time. Today, I had an amazing team, and they're here sitting with me. 13 different committees, 100 of volunteers to help me enhance the vision and the mission of the African Leadership Group. Now, we know there are significant differences between the African immigrant experience and the African American experience. But the reality is we have more than binds us that divides us. Dr. King understood the similarity between Africans and African American. As Derek mentioned, in 1957, he attended the inauguration of Ghana's first prime minister, Kwame Krumah, recognizing the significance of the decolonization movement underway in Africa and its parallel to the civil rights in the United States. As Dr. King drew his inspiration from Gandhi, African like Nelson Mandela drew their inspiration from Dr. King and built the liberation movement on the foundation of King philosophy, nonviolence. In the US, the President Barack Obama would never have become president without the trailblazing work undertaken by Dr. King and his predecessor and successor. Now, as an important new piece of the work of the African Leadership Group, Breaking Barrier Initiative, building bridges between the African immigrant and the African American, Dr. King once said, we may have all come on different ship, but we are in the same boat now. And yet too often, relationship between African immigrant and African American are defined by misunderstanding and ignorance. Breaking Barriers came out of the Leadership Africa program. With my peers, we conducted survey from both African immigrant and African American communities, asking simple question, like what, what were their perception of either communities? And what are their wishes from both communities? The findings were amazing. Both communities wanted to come together, but they did not know how to do so. Going forward, the Breaking Barrier Initiative would conduct several community forums with both communities. Join events like Black Art Festival, Juneteenth, Africa Impact, and Martin Luther King Day. We're gonna be organizing trip, trip to Africa, cultural exchange program, educational program, and much more. I believe the Breaking Barrier work combined with all the ALG initiatives descends directly from the work of Dr. King and philosophy. In closing, I would like to leave you with a charge, and this is where I need your undivided attention. I hope you will pound seriously and attempt to make meaningful and actionable action in your daily life. Consider each day and every day what action you can take in your life to further the legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King. As a nation, we are more divided than any time since the Civil War. We can each one of us to reach across divides, to break down barriers, to build understanding, to see one another as human beings. Our future depends upon each of us taking action, nonviolent action. 
to help Dr. King's dream become reality. In his own words, darkness cannot drive darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. I want to take the time to thank the School of Mind for giving me this platform to share the story of how Dr. King inspired me to follow my dreams. I want to encourage you to follow yours. Take a seat at the table, as we always said at the African Leadership Group. If you are not at the table, you are on the menu. Thank you for having me. It's truly an honor. Thank you. Thank you for having me.